<laughs> so that's obviously the secret to um, getting something through immediately after the break. Provide cake. Okay. All right, so now let's jump back to the main um, order of the agenda. So we're now at, where did we get to? Secure cycle parking update, which is the remaining item from the Infrastructure, Transport and Environment Committee. Um, Pauline, you're going to advise us that this um, is a, a relatively simple recommendation, I think, from the committee, aren't you? Yeah, except, um, and this, this was generated from a committee discussion calling for a report on the uh, cycle parking. Um, I think we probably should, um, in the staff recommendation, um, we seem to have dropped that out, which I think probably should have stayed in, just noting the ongoing biannual spring and autumn monitoring of on-street and public secure cycle parking facilities by operations team. And this will allow for improved understanding of asset conditions and use patterns in the central city to allow for a more agile response to demand. And I think with the committee's permission, I think that should still be in our recommendation. So pick up clause one in the staff recommendation. Yes. And lift that up and make it a clause two in the committee recommendation. Exactly. Um, All right. And so this um, this is an ongoing program, but the, the committee um, does have concerns that the that the parking, the on-street parking, may not keep up with demand. So we're really keen to have this budget set so that we can have um, provision for parking throughout the city and the suburbs for the increase in, in um, cycle parks. So I'm happy to move that once the other one is included. Yeah, and noting that including the budget of 20,000 in the draft long-term plan, obviously this will be subject to long-term plan decision-making yes. processes before it's confirmed in the final budget. Yes. Yeah. Great, all right, so let's get that new resolution in front of us. It's just including the staff recommendation, which is on page 121. Yeah, yeah. And this is allowing me to see how these two screens are working perfectly, actually. This is great. Is it? Oh, good. Yeah. Andrew? Yep. All right. So, Aaron, you've got it. So, let's now move to questions. So, Aaron? Yep. Yeah, just on that question, because it says included in the draft, so it still goes out for consultation? Include it in the draft. Yeah. And then we'll have our decision making on the draft that will determine whether it ends up in the final LTP or not. Yeah. Mike. So Pauline's moving, Mike's seconding. No further questions? Phil. Just a comment, in fact, in many ways that's a, if I may, that, that's a minimal amount in my view. Um, given that recently we've been informed that each car park in the city costs at least $30,000. So we're actually asking for less money than one car park. But however, I think that, that sh I'm expecting that that amount should cover the, the cycle parking we need. Is that a question though, Phil? Why don't you ask the staff? Well, can I, I probably should check that. Yes. Yeah. So Dave, how many, car, how many bike parks are we going to get? <laughs> that was a nice piece of cake, Mr. Sheehan. <laughs> I'm going to there really Trudy. is benefit in providing cake, isn't there? Um, I'm going to introduce Trudy, who will be able to answer that. Um, but one of the things I do think, there may be opportunities also to get sponsorship around cycle car parks. Um, if you're a keen cyclist, you may want to put a little brass park on a, um, an appropriate cycle park somewhere. People put them on um, chairs, uh, for example, where uh, if you've got a uh, someone who's a keen walker and they would like to put a chair up, well, maybe we can accelerate that program or that budget by a little bit of sponsorship potentially but Trudy will be able to answer how many um, cycle parks she will get for her 20,000. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for your comment Well, and thank you for your question. Um, yeah I think we discussed this last time uh, per unit maybe 500 to 1,000 per unit but I think it's the ways and means that we're delivering what we're delivering in cycle parking so I, I I'm quite keen to explore working with BikeWise who have um, uh, sponsorship um, and gifting ideas from San Francisco does but yeah you, you're not you're not getting too far with 20,000. 
So it also wonder, for example, you know, with um, cyclists commuting, for example, having to some key hubs in the suburbs, especially, for example, shopping centres, that in fact th th this this would be focused on the central city, and that, that's the that's in so the recommendation. Citywide, it says. Sorry. It does say citywide? Oh, does it? Okay. Mm. No, All right. No, so I, I would envisage it being. Um, businesses or, or operations that are not currently covered under district plan don't have that requirement perhaps um, <laughs> perhaps it's in key activity centers and they need some assistance but um, yeah I, I don't see 20,000 being necessarily spent on per unit um, filling filling gaps in the central city I know there's demand but it's not necessarily um, quantified and analyzed but, but with, with what you said, I, I would suggest, if, with the agreement of the chair and deputy, that we increase this to thirty thousand. So, Phil, you're you're wanting to move an amendment, or you're wanting with the permission of the, permission yeah. of the mover and seconder, mm. um, you're suggesting that we increase this to thirty thousand. There's a further suggestion that we increase it to 40,000. We need 50. <laughs> <laughs> Any advance? So make it a million. Yeah. Oh okay. I mean, all of this is going to be subject to debate as part of the LTP anyway. That's right. What we're doing today is, is deciding what we put forward to the draft LTP. Um, so, mover and seconder, um, what are you going to be happy with? 30 or 40? Or 20? 40? Pauline, 40? It's just recommending for the LTP. It so is. I'm with 40. Yeah. We can I come mean, down from there, but we probably wouldn't be able to go up from All there. we're doing is putting forward a number to build into the draft LTP that we'll be discussing as part of the draft LTP and as part of the final LTP. So what that number is, um, is potentially subject to change anyway. Yep. Yep. All um, right. So we go 40. Um, so we're still, I'm taking it that we're still in questions. Are there any further questions yeah. at this time? Dion. Um, do NZTA ever fund bike parks? <coughs> I would have to look. I, I imagine that somewhere um, within the provision we may be able to look at some, depending on what other projects we'd integrate into. Right. So look, I, I can't... Can we, can we ask for a uh, we would, this we would look to see if we had that possibility. I would like us to actually investigate that. If we're putting 40 grand, I'd actually like NZTA to partner fund with this type of thing because... NZTA have got a funding manual that actually sets out their funding. And look, if we had the right person here, they could give you the answer to that. Of what Why don't we bring that into the LTP discussion yeah, that we're right. going to need to we, have? We'll make sure we put the right funding mechanisms in there, whether it's $20,000 of rates, because it'll be 51%. Um, if it was eligible, so okay. I, I know that in the local cycleway business case, is one line item for parking and accessories, but it was only, I think, fifty thousand nominal amount anyway. Yeah, I mean, if MCA, yeah. So, so I mean, no, what I'm, local cycleways business case. So what I'm thinking here is that if we're doing, if we're doing this, and we're kind of setting a bit of an example around the country, we should actually be setting an example, or maybe a, a best case or best practice, I suppose, for NZTA to actually start rolling around the country. That could be something that we could lead. Well, all right. I would say is NZ, NZTA is things. really committed to cycleways, and I think the comments from the new Minister of Transport again, uh, the new government, the Greens, are very um, committed. So I do think that they will... They've been very good on support to date, and I don't imagine that will change. So, so if you can pick that Correct. NZTA potential funding component up as something to bring to the LTP discussions, that will be the best place for that to land, and that acknowledges the question. Um, now, Mike, you'd indicated, was that a change, or did you have a question? That was the change? Okay, great. Um, so now moving to Aaron. So my question is, before we throw just money at the problem, uh, of bike parks, how difficult do we make it for private individuals or companies to put in bike stands outside their business? Do we make it really difficult for them? So the best way to solve the problem is the council just spends as much money as it can on putting in as many bike stands as we can, or do we encourage businesses and that and just say, hey look, you just come see your local community board, they'll sign it off, they've got mandate, you can put one in. I'm not sure whether the community board's got mandate or not mandate about activities on the street, but basically um, I've never had a complaint of someone who's wanted to put a cycle stand outside their business and uh, we've said no, but um, you may know more than I do, but basically um, 
I haven't also had a lot of those kind of requests come across my desk. Do you know? I think there have been a few individual ones, and I, I have had inquiries from members of the public who are saying, why is there not, um, last week, um, a cycle stand right outside Fresh Choice mm. in the central city? And I quickly looked at the map, and I thought, well, there's a lot at the interchange, and there's some on the other side, but I guess she was saying she couldn't take her shopping, the 50 metres or, or whatever, to the closest um, public cycle stands that were available. So that might be a business... For instance, working with um, bike, uh, bike wise, and the public, where the business is um, made aware that their customers would like uh, um, at the door um, convenient cycle parking. I don't know if this is the right time or place to say, but we're consulting on street designs where there's a lot of opportunities for um, individual car park spaces um, potentially to be used for cycle corral parking. Um, I know we have a consultation process, but um, I would say there are, are givens in street design and there are aspects that can be consulted on. And if a business is feeling perhaps they would like more cycle parking on public um, road reserve, then there's potential to convert on street parking space to cycle corrals. I've worked in that area pre-earthquake and um, yeah that's what I'd like to see potentially mm. in the future. Obviously we don't want businesses in a situation where um, their cycle parking is blocking uh, pedestrian access um, so you can't overcrowd that service area so there's on-street space. It's yes, it's the, used. The, and the reason I ask that is I'd rather we're in a position that we're encouraging businesses and individuals, if not going to the point of having a competition for the best bike stand, like there's the ones around the country for the best public toilet, but in Christchurch being the top cycling town in New Zealand, we have a competition for the best bike stand and every year it's awarded to someone and they put them in themselves, they pay for them, we just sign the bit of paper, it doesn't cost them, doesn't cost them 10000 for a resource consent to put in a bike stand. It just happens. We had that a couple of years ago, didn't we? We had a competition. Yeah. All right. Was, that was been so, I mean, these are all things that we probably could pick up as part of that wider discussion through the LTP around how many bike stands do we need, what do we get for our money, and who's paying for them, and to what extent could we catalyse some investment from businesses. Yep. Great. Any further questions? Okay, great. So we have got a mover and a seconder for this. Is there any debate? Sarah. Thank you. I mean, I, it's really interesting that we've got to $40,000, um, which, give or take, is one or two car parks. When we're looking, you know, we've just spent $28 million building 800 car parks for Litchfield Street um, with a, a few car, a bike parks down, down the bottom. Um, we are looking at, you know, transforming the way that people move around the city. One of the things about cycle parking being actually quite close and convenient to the actual shops, which is different to cars, is that there's a real security risk with bikes. And there was an article in the press about 18 months ago where you know, there were 50 bikes a month stolen in the CBD, and that was with locks cut and those kind of things. And so for, for people who are choosing to use their bike, having their bike quite close by to the shop is actually um, is really useful. For commuters, the, um, the longer term, the secure bike parking is much more useful but for um, actual shopping, being close to the shops is, is quite important for cyclists. Um, we did manage to get $20,000 out of the, the region, um, urban region budget sort of reallocated for this financial year, and there's extra cycle parking going in at the moment in the CBD, which has been really good, so I've managed to get some on Worcester Boulevard. They're investigating some extra parking outside the piano at the moment, and some other near some, um, some key shops and things like that in town that have requested them um, over the last wee while. Um, I'm really keen that this doesn't get used to supplement funding for major cycle route parking and master plan parking. Those have their own budgets and need to be keeping, this needs to be kept separate for areas that aren't serviced by master plans and by um, the major cycle routes. It needs to be outside of those areas and I don't want those teams coming to try and nab a little bit of this budget eventually um, when they're short on you know, 500 bucks for a, for a bike park. Um, this is to extend the reach, um, uh, not to replace what's um, already planned. Thank you. Dion? I'm in favour. Um, I would like us to see what NZTA will do, but I will implore this council to stop the conversation about 
bike parks, bicycles versus car parks or cars. It just is not helping the city at all. Car parks, the reality is they have a positive net present value. They bring income to the city over time. Bike parks don't because we don't charge them. Look, we're in debate. I'm, just, I'm, 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 to I'm talking here. Opinion. If you look at the numbers, and I just worked it out, they do. But that's over over a period of time. It depends on what your what your return rate is. But it is not helpful that we're talking about car parks versus bike parks or cars and versus bikes. We've just got to say this is the way we're going to do it. We've just got to do it instead of trying to compare and do that. This is why we're having all these problems with some of our streets in the city and people sort of getting antsy about each other and stuff like that. It has got to stop. And I would really, I like this, this is really good and we need to be doing this, but we can't keep comparing it to how much one car park will cost or something like that. So I just want us to start changing our language around how we talk about biking and cycling in the city and actually looking forward positively rather than actually comparing it to what was. Yanni. Uh, yeah, um, I just wanted to pick up, um, before the earthquake we spent a huge amount of money, I think it was about 500000 putting in uh, cycling, public cycling, cycling parks for bike share type schemes and there was very low uptake. So we had a whole bunch of excessive um, cycling infrastructure that wasn't used. So I think the big change for the city though is through our district plan, the requirement for private developers to provide a certain level of cycling parking as a requirement is probably going to lead, I think, to uh, a much greater response than us just spending money as a council putting in the infrastructure. Um, and I really just want to pick up that, you know, part of the report mentions that, but it's not just the central city. When malls redeveloped, for example, Eastgate basically didn't have to provide the minimum requirements. They get a consent to not provide the cycling parking, which I, I just think it's counterproductive to, to what we're trying to achieve. So we do need to take a multifaceted approach to this. It's not just about spending money and putting them on public um, sites. It is actually about, I think, requiring those larger scale developments to provide a suitable, adequate level, looking at the future demand, particularly with the cycleways that we're building. So, you know, I welcome the opportunity to look at this through the um, long-term plan. Uh, and I think also the other thing in here, which is mentioned, which there's been virtually no discussion and I look forward to the time when we can be briefed as the public transport review, the strategy for public regional public transport, which we're supposed to have a whole um, network of suburban bus interchanges. That was, you know, that what's happening there, not quite sure, but the opportunity that some of us have asked for a long time to have those as multi-purpose rather than just for buses, um, I think, you know, as, as a way to look forward to the future. So. The sooner we get that in front of us, I think the better, um, because there are other opportunities that we're currently not looking at, which I think have the potential to do it. But yeah, happy for this, noting that we're going to have this debate through the long-term plan anyway. Um, so I don't think we should have a huge debate about the quantum at the moment, other than the desire to see good monitoring and putting these cycle parks in place. Phil. Through you, Andrew, I think as a council we're all aware that, in the, especially in the inner city, the focus is on an accessible city, and that is to cater for all modes of transport. And in terms of investment, this, this is really good value for money. It's as simple as that. It's not a matter of competition between cyclists and, walker, and walkers and buses and cars. It's a matter of how we do this well. And I think clearly the points being made around the value of this is that for some time we haven't had these in. The, the, the numbers of the counts of, of cyclists on the cycleways we've put in has far exceeded expectations. So there's a really good time to actually make sure that we get this part done too. Thank you. Pauline. Quickly to round off, that was the general view of the committee that already there's not enough park cycle stands in, in, um, in town. So um, we've got to get ready for what's going to be a massive influx with the uptake of the cycleways, and it is increasing, as Phil says, all the time and beyond expectations. So we get them in before we need them. Don't wait till we, when we need them to get them in, which is already pretty much now. So I'm supportive. Yeah, in the context of providing infrastructure for cyclists that works as a joined up network, you know, we've got the major cycleways that we're investing in heavily. 
We're seeing good uptake of those major cycle routes already. We're expecting to see far greater uptake. We need to provide realistic parking options and solutions for the cyclists that are using those major cycleways. So I think this project has got huge value. Um, I'm, I'm pleased to, to hear the support around the table and I um, look forward to the discussion when we get to the long-term plan, taking into account the additional information that we've asked for that'll come to that discussion so that we can come up with what turns out to be the right amount to deliver what's needed to make the most of the other infrastructure that we're putting in. Aaron. Since we're only 53 days till Christmas, I'll be the Grinch. Um, I was happy with the $20,000 and I thought it set a good level, but I'm a little disappointed that an hour after a conversation we were having about how our city can't afford to pay its rates and we're at the level of, limit of what we can pay, we just chucked 20 grand into uh, the LTP just pretty well, we did we just added 20 grand to the draft but where I believe there are more um, creative ways to solve the problem and we should be encouraging a lot more businesses I like bike parks and I like the ones that um, Sarah's pushed for in the inner city I've used some of them already um, my bike hasn't been stolen it's kind of too cool to steal anyway because you'd stand out too quickly so get my bike back but the um, the thing is that I think there is a better way, and if we want to be a more creative city, uh, we should be looking at different ways of solving this problem. So I would have supported the 20, not happy to support the 40, because I think we should be more creative with our spending. We just have not got an open checkbook. But we do need the cycle car parks, or cycle parks. Um, oh yeah, absolutely support it, but I just would have preferred, no, because I'll just vote against yeah we'll vote against one if we can even yeah i'll put one and two separately and obviously you know the, the debate that you're having will land as part of the ltp and if, one, and anyway. if one fails because everyone suddenly grows a um an economic conscience in the next couple of minutes then we'll try the 20 again all right so i'll take that as you foreshadowing a further resolution if clause one fails that you would move 20. all right thank you glenn thanks yeah just a, a couple of quick points that the first this is still a draft, so we are going to have that further conversation. And I guess just a straight out return on investment, I could hardly think of a better uh, return than this. I mean, when you think 40,000 for the um, resulting uh, social and health benefits, and I'm sure they can be quantified, you know, that, that's excellent. It's right up there. So I'm glad we're doing this. Could be good if we could avoid the cycle versus car debates. <laughs> I think we need both. But uh, we are trying to bring about change in the city with the rollout of the cycleways coming out of what people wanted for the rebuilt Christchurch. So, yeah, let's just keep it going. And uh, great investment, this. Great. Thank you. Mike. Thank you. I wasn't going to speak to this because it was a bit of a no-brainer, really, but following Aaron's comments, which I think a lot of us now obviously understand that we're getting to a point, really, where the rates increases are just not acceptable, and obviously we'll be looking to try and bring them right down, but we've got to look at what the projects are. We've got multi-million dollar projects that we just keep pushing through and pushing through without appropriate reports to actually do that. So this is actually really, really important for the city as we move forward. You know, if we get more people biking, um, and this will encourage people to bike, if we put in bike stands outside of shops, the local cafes and things like that around the city, actually people will start biking, less people will start driving, and actually the maintenance on roads will decrease. So this actually has positive impacts across the city if we do this. So $40,000 on a draft long-term plan actually will have better benefits. If we're looking to decrease rates, we need to look at the big projects, the multi-use arena, the, the cycleways as a whole, all these pools we're building, this is what we need to look at to reduce the, um, the massive big rates increases. We're seeing not $40,000 towards bike stands, which potentially will have a positive impact on the city. Tim. Um, oddly enough, I actually support what Mike and Aaron are both saying. I think you know, like we are going into a really difficult and probably the, the single most difficult long-term plan financially that we've um, gone into for a city um, and the analogy with regards to the dog's tail I actually think it's a serpent's tail because it's just going to keep going on and on and on it's going to have a bite to it uh, I do believe that there are more cyclists on the road and with more um, bike parks but one thing I think that we really have to do as, as a council is just get cleverer 
the, the, or more clever to be correct. Um, <laughs> With regards to, you know, like sponsorship, you know, th there are bike manufacturers, there are a whole lot of things that we can start thinking outside the box. We've got a line here with you know, a city where anything can happen, and yet I think in some areas we are stuck in this box. So I think we've got to be um, just, just a bit more wise where we're going. And yes, we are looking at multi million um, dollar uh, projects, but every single project is going to count at the end of the day in our long term plan because we are at a point with our rates where I believe our community cannot afford it and that report that we talked to or many of you talked to on the, uh, item 15 should really be emphasised what the legacy of cost is to the ratepayers of Christchurch because all these projects, all our community projects, everything that we do is going to be affected by those debts. So I'm going to support Aaron with regards to number one just to add another 20 grand whether it's 200 on a two, 400k budget or whatever we've got to be very clever and careful what we do. So um, thank you. All right, so I'll put the two clauses separately. So I'll put clause one first of all. All those in favour? Aye. Against? No. Okay, so that's carried. Do you want those no's noted? Yes, please. Okay, so those that voted against, if you could raise your hands, please. So it's Aaron, Tim and Dave noting that um, those three voted against. And then I'll put clause two. All those in favour? Against? That's carried. Great, thank you.